This video is part one of the Unit 9 notes. We will be covering the introduction to stoichiometry, mole ratios, the calculation of molar mass and molar volume, and how to use stoichiometry island. If you're following along in the online textbook, this will be section 10.1 through 10.13. Stoichiometry is the study of quantitative relationships between the amount of reactants used and the amount of products formed by chemical reactions. In a balanced chemical reaction, the coefficients represent a whole number ratio comparing the quantity of each reactant and product. The coefficients could represent the number of molecules for each element or compound, or the number of moles. Considering the coefficients as the number of moles allows the conversion to many other useful units. So if we are looking at this balanced equation shown here, we can see that for every one N2 molecule, we need three H2 molecules in order to form two NH3 molecules. A mole ratio is a conversion factor that relates the amount of moles of any two substances in a chemical reaction. The numbers in the conversion factor come from the coefficients in the balanced equation. So in the picture shown here, we can see all of the possibilities for how we can compare our reactants and our products for this particular chemical reaction. So if I wanted to convert between nitrogen and hydrogen, I know that I have one mole of N2 for every three moles of H2. And I could set up the nitrogen on the top or the bottom of that fraction. If I was comparing nitrogen to ammonia and H3, I could have the one mole of nitrogen to two moles of ammonia or two moles of ammonia to one mole of nitrogen. So the type that you're going to have here, whether you, your nitrogen is on the top or the bottom, is going to depend on which of the reactants or products you're starting with and then what you're trying to find. A conversion factor is chosen based on the substance you're starting with and the substance you wish to find. Dimensional analysis must be used to ensure that units cancel properly. In our example, we're trying to find the mole ratio which should be used to convert from moles of nitrogen to moles of ammonia given the balanced equation. It's the same equation that we were looking at before. Now the way that you should set this up, if you're looking at the, uh, at the word equation here, it looks like we're trying to convert from moles of nitrogen and we're trying to get two moles of ammonia. So whichever one we're starting with, which here is the moles of nitrogen, that means that has to go on the bottom in order to cancel with dimensional analysis. So moles of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen. Whatever I'm looking for should go on the top, moles of NH3. The numbers here are the coefficients from the balanced equation. So I can see that I had two ammonia for every one nitrogen. So that's the mole ratio that we would use in this situation. If I chose the other mole ratio, this mole ratio is still correct. It's still one mole of nitrogen to two moles of ammonia. But here I can see that these units would not cancel out. So I would not be able to use that for any kind of calculation. All right, remember for all checkpoints, you should be writing these out within your notebook. For this checkpoint, which mole ratio should be used to convert from moles of hydrogen? So it looks like we're gonna to have to start with the H2 and we are going to moles of ammonia. So I'm starting with moles of H2. That means that moles of H2 is going to need to go in the bottom of my conversion factor. And I'm looking for moles of ammonia, which is NH3. So that's going to go on top. I'm getting the coefficients from the balanced equation. So this time I'm using these two numbers. The ammonia gets the two and the hydrogen gets the three. For this particular que question, I just need the mole ratio. I'm not actually doing a calculation. So that would be the answer. This is my mole ratio right here. All right, next up, how to determine the molar mass or molar volume for a substance. Molar mass is calculated by adding the masses of each element in a compound while taking into account the quantity of each atom in the formula represented by the subscripts. Element masses should be taken from the periodic table, and we know for molar masses, we're supposed to round two places after the decimal. So this is all stuff that we've actually done before. For our example here, what is the molar mass of nitrogen, N2? We know that a single nitrogen would be 14.01 grams per mole from the periodic table. But in a molecule of nitrogen, since it is a diatomic element, I have two of them. So I need to multiply this mass by two. So I have 
if this was a compound, I would take the subscripts into account and I would also add up the masses for each of the individual elements within that compound. And that is what we're going to see in our next checkpoint. So in this one, we are trying to determine the molar mass of ammonia, which is NH3. So I know that a single nitrogen is going to be 14.01 grams. I know that a single hydrogen is going to be 1.01 grams. And again, I'm just getting these numbers from the periodic table, and I am rounding to two places after the decimal. Now from the hydrogen, I can see from this formula that I actually have three of them. So I need to multiply that by three. So for the three hydrogens, oh, that should be a three, that's a total mass of 3.03 .03 grams. And then I'm going to add these two numbers together. So that's going to be a total mass of 17.04 grams. So that would be my molar mass for ammonia. These molar masses will eventually be needed in order to do conversions between grams and moles. All right, now for determining the molar volume. Avogadro's principle states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of gas particles. We've covered this earlier in the year. That's Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, therefore, any mole of, sorry, one mole of any gas at standard temperature, which is zero degrees Celsius, and standard pressure, which is one atmosphere, occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. Standard temperature and pressure is often abbreviated as STP. So for the calculations that we're going to be doing in this unit, any time that we are using a volume within our conversion factor, we are going to be plugging in 22.4 liters and we're going to assume that it is at standard temperature and pressure. All right, so for our final topic within this first notes video, we're going to be looking at something called stoichiometry island. Uh, this diagram is a reference material that you would be able to use for any test or quiz, and I will post a copy of this to Google Classroom. Over here on the left side of the island, you can see that this is where you have substance A, and on the right side, this is where you have substance B. So if you are converting between two different things, let's say I'm going from nitrogen to ammonia, like in one of our previous examples, that means we're going from the left side of the island to the right side of the island. On the far left side, you can start with either a mass, a volume, the number of particles, which could be your atoms or molecules, or your number of moles. As you go across the right side of the island, it's essentially a mirror, so we have moles again, but this is now for a new substance. And then you have your mass, your volume, and your number of particles again. On each of these lines is a hint as to what numbers you should be using for the conversion factor. So if I'm going between mass and moles, one mole is equal to the molar mass. So you would add them up from the periodic table. Here, volume is equal to 22.4 liters for one mole. When we're going between atoms and molecules or moles, one mole is going to be equal to Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. When we're going between moles and moles, you're getting your coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So you would have to have that equation in order to do that conversion. So that concludes part one of the unit nine notes. When we come back for part two, we are going to go through one-step stoichiometry conversions.